says for you. But the same song rises and shines on the poor folks too. I don't mind you turning around. I myself might like to find a little higher ground. Well, it's high time that you found the same people you misuse on your way up. You might meet up. songwriters, producers, and piano players that we've ever seen, and uh, that song's been covered by a lot of great artists. Uh, my favorite version is, of course, by Little Feet and Little George. Um, it's on the Waiting for Columbus album, which is an album I listened to religiously back uh, starting when I was probably about 19. But the Alan Toussaint version uh, is a little different, a little funkier, but he was from New Orleans, you know. Um, my two favorite cities for music are Chicago and New Orleans. And, uh, you know, I grew up as a Chicago blues purist, but then when I started listening to uh, Professor Longhair and Alan Toussaint and The Meters and Dr. John and Snooks Eaglin and so many other people, I fell in love with so much in New Orleans music, and I like to incorporate that into my plan. So we just actually started doing this tune within the last year. Um, and my old friend Warren Haynes also covers it. I think he's doing it with Government Mule. It's uh, pretty challenging to play it without a rhythm section, but we've been managing, you know, since World War C broke out. Uh, we've done probably about eight or ten duo gigs, and uh, just trying to keep that slow funk rhythm happening in your head without, without, that, without that beat, you know? It's a challenge. Um, it's an interesting form. It's got that very long one, and I tend to use uh, the seven raise nine chord a lot, which is, uh, you know, one of my favorite chords. It's very bluesy. It could be used in minor blues, actually, if you just change one note. But, you know, you don't even have to accent that note straight seven raise nine still work there's your G minor there's your seven raise nine um, and I do some octave work I do my octaves there on the D string and the B string then I change to the A string and the G string pretty simple octaves just to fatten things up a little bit what else can I say about that tune um, you know the vocal approach uh, just trying to sing it with soul and stay on pitch, basically, and I hope I did. <laughs> so, uh, John, why don't you talk about, you know, for an Alan Toussaint tune, being a piano player, that must be right in your wheelhouse. Yeah, it's a great song. Um, and, and I love the Little Feet versions of it, too. I've always appreciated Billy Payne's piano playing. Oh, yeah. um, there was a... a fundraiser for Tipitina's just last weekend. Somebody covered it on there, too. Um, for this one, playing it as a duo, um, or in general, really, even playing it with the whole band, it's just about, for me, leaving it plenty of space. Um, as a duo, I stick pretty close to that bass line. Just try to keep the time real steady. 
Um, but it's interesting that you you mentioned that raised nine chord, which maybe seems to feel a lot better on the guitar than the piano. I tend to stick to more of a minor approach with more of my voicings, and uh, so it's. scale with some some passing tones. Um, the Dorian Gray invent that scale. Oh, sorry. And I do uh, a lot of full chord movement with it. As long as you land back on the chord. Yeah basically on anything between is this kind of passing tones. Yeah. Yeah, the one thing I'd say, you know, it's not a it's not a 12 bar blues, and some people might say it's not a blues. But to me, it has as much blues feeling and blues message in the lyrics and in the groove than any blues I know. I mean, keep that in mind all you blues purists out there who just want to play one, four, five, you know, in shuffles and slow blues. But tunes like this have a really heavy blues feeling, even though they're not blues structured. So I think I'll leave it at that.